Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode, one of my favorite companies. I've been doing business with Linode for eight years now. They're growing all over the world. They're opening data centers all over the place. Mine is in New Jersey. However, they're opening up in Canada, Australia, India, everywhere. Uh, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your app. Like I pay $20 a month. I've scaled it to 250,000 customers in a single month with just using about five to 10% of my available resources on a $20 a month account. So if you guys are looking to host something yourself, there's really no better company that I recommend than Linode. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about the actual truths of becoming a web developer, so-called, so to speak. Number one, don't ever call yourself a web developer. That is a, a terrible thing. That's like calling yourself a uh, web designer or something like nobody wants to do that. Nobody gets treated successfully doing that. You call yourself a software engineer. That's number one. Uh, everybody calls himself that in this industry. It doesn't matter if you went to school or not, but if you're not calling yourself that, then you're doing yourself a disservice because so many Node.js, JavaScript newbies and all that stuff, they're called software engineers. And it's not just because they went to school. It's because they just call themselves that and their job title actually uh, also calls them themselves that. So you do not want to be a web developer. Now, if anything, you can be a full stack developer while that term is still hot, but don't ever call yourself a web developer. Another reason why you don't want to be a web developer is we, we write code for a living. So this code, it goes to servers, databases, mobile apps. It goes to games. Like why would you want to be called a web developer when you could be an actual software engineer that writes code that could transfer from one platform to the next. We all know JavaScript isn't that much different than Python versus Java, C Sharp. I've coded all of them. They're not that much different. All right, guys. So the next thing I'm going to discuss is that the future and money in being a software engineer is right now. It's kind of the golden age of being a software engineer. More people are getting hired in this field without a college degree. But if you look back in the 1970s, that wasn't even really the case. Like Dennis Ritchie, a very educated man who created C, most of the greatest programmers are very educated and they, they now teach in universities. And for the most part, they're not entrepreneurs. So the future of web development or just being a software engineer that deals with web, that is a little bit iffy. We have tools that are getting better and better day by day that are like from artificial intelligence tools and machine, machine learning to things like Wix and Squarespace and all this other stuff that takes away actual web development work from people that used to be freelancers or people that used to be able to work for companies to do this stuff. And if the argument is that like, companies can't adapt the product enough well that shit changes all the time so like we don't know what it's going to be like five years from now if these tools keep getting better and better but we do know that they have gotten better and better over the years so again don't call yourself a web developer all right so the next thing that really pisses me off is when people talk about the fact that you can just jump into this career without a degree i actually did it i started learning how to be a programmer at 28 i had to invest thousands of hours though away from my family probably ruined my marriage uh but that said, nobody's getting jobs very easy if you don't have a degree. Even if you have professional experience, you have a black mark automatically against your resume. So for all the people out there that talk about being self-taught this and that, every company cares about that. It doesn't matter if you have actual work experience or not. You're just going to have a harder time getting a job. So people don't want to hear that you don't have a degree, you didn't go to college. A lot of people that make these decisions too to hire they have like a chip on their shoulder because I think they get pissed off when they see other people that have actually succeeded in this high paying industry that didn't go through the same route and had to jump through the same hoops that they did and don't have $200,000 in college debt that they have to pay back. All right. So the next thing is that people that recommend boot camps for actually getting your education. I had one that was the sponsor of this channel for a long time, but I didn't go to a boot camp. Honestly, I wouldn't even recommend one, to be honest. Like people can do that if they feel like they're going to get a leg up. But I will tell you from from seeing this in di like different companies in this corporate field, boot camp graduates are typically frowned upon. They're typically known as know nothing, really worthless employees to start out of the gate. And some, you know, can excel. But for the most part, boot camps have a very negative connotation in this industry. So here's another one I love that the portfolio matters more than your degree. That is such bullshit, dude. Like that is the biggest piece of bullshit I've ever seen. So unless you're actually like the guy that created Redux or something like that, if you don't have something really legitimate, then dude, it doesn't matter. 
the, the portfolio does not matter unless you really do make something that isn't like truly impressive. And that's very hard to do if you're not an actual senior engineer. So here's another one. It, you get to work for yourself as a, as a software engineer, web developer. And that's just not the case. If you're doing a nine to five, you're going to be exhausted by the time you come home. In many cases, it's a conflict of interest to be working on projects that have anything to do with what you do day to day. In some cases, you can look at the tech lead. They fired him just because he was talking about a different company on one of his his uh his side projects so like companies don't want you to have side projects they want you to learn on your own time but they're not trying to have you invest a bunch of time in your side projects so that you guys can start making money and stuff like that it takes a lot of time dedication and effort and most companies aren't cool with that so for all the people that say oh you get to get in this industry you get to work on like you better keep it hush hush keep it on the down low because like that's just not the case. And another thing too, is if you're truly giving your all to the company, then after a nine to five day, you just don't have the time and energy to be able to work on a truly significant side project. That's going to get, uh, that's going to like change the world or really probably get you where you want to be. So you have to kind of uh, gauge whether or not you want to be the nine to five guy that gets the $120,000 a year salary, or do you want to be the person that's going to be working from your home where you're struggling to get one contract to the next to try to pay for your health insurance and mortgage and all that. So yeah, like freelancing and consulting. Another thing too, guys, nobody values a software engineer's time the way that they should. We should be getting paid $150 an hour if we're doing consulting work minimum and nobody wants to pay that. So just, if you think that that's easy, go on uh, Fiverr or freelance or any of these other crappy websites and see if you can actually find some contracts that actually pay a decent wage. All right, guys, so what do you do? This is not a bad industry to get into, but let's be honest, I didn't even touch on the fact that if you don't have a degree, you have no management shot at most companies, even if you're the best developer they've ever seen. But one thing you need to keep in mind is that having a four-year degree is better than having no degree. It's better than going to a boot camp, and it's better than being the self-taught guy, for sure. Even if that person got in the industry, it's still better to have your degree because then you have at least a shot at management. Another great benefit is that you have the ability to learn all the time on the job and learning is fun for a lot of people. But if you're not a self-starter and you have to be told everything that you have to learn, you're probably not going to excel in this job. But if you do want to excel in this job and you guys do want to be a software engineer, what it takes is it takes hard work, ambition, and faith in yourself. Throughout the process, you're going to run into a lot of jackasses that are probably going to deny you for the opportunity that you need. Um, and, and that's just the way you have to take it. You have to take it. Hey, these guys don't understand my worth and all this stuff. And then you're going to have to do something about it to, to show that you are worthy. But you need to show that to yourself more than anybody else. Eventually, things will come together. My best, uh, my best advice is really be an entrepreneur. Be an entrepreneurial programmer and just start building entire full stacks. When you start building ambitious projects, you quickly run into all the different skills that are necessary in the real IT field. And that's the type of impressive portfolio that you can show to somebody else. But nobody cares that you spun up a Node.js CRUD application after watching a tutorial on Pluralsight or YouTube. What would be more impressive, and really what I did in my case, is I had a, a wide range of skills. I had HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I had uh, uh, like Perl, Python. I had data scraping. I had web server maintenance, uh, cloud computing, database management, all this stuff. I had all this stuff to build my project. And even then, all they did was give me a bare mark, like the, the, the lowest possible position in the company to d actually write code. And I, I basically was a UI guy that did a lot of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But it took three years to gather up all that knowledge and including how to run and maintain a business. And really, they hired me more for ambition and it wasn't about the fact that I could write good code. When I first started writing C Sharp, that stuff was difficult for me. So in my opinion, if you want to be a software engineer, you have to be entrepreneurial if you're not going to actually pursue the college degree you you should pursue your own business and along the way show other people to say hey I'm, I'm a software engineer because i did all this this and this although i was trying to run my business that would be my advice not just because it worked for me but just because if i were hiring that's the kind of thing i'd be looking for i would be looking for an ambitious creative type that actually wants to try to do something and and, and they they were learning on their own time they obviously enjoy coding coding is a very enjoyable thing a lot of people do it as a hobby and one of the greatest things i think about being a software engineer is that i did this as a hobby for years before i ever got paid to do it so by the time you're getting paid to do it it's like you know the starving artist that's finally getting a decent wage and, and getting the recognition that they feel that they deserve for the art that they're producing your mileage is going to vary for 
any sort of endeavor that you take on. But again, nobody really cares that you know how to spin up a Node.js Express website. It's going to take a lot more than that. And in a nutshell, also stay in school if you don't want to pursue that route or if you really want to struggle. Like if you're in an area of the world that doesn't have a ton of jobs, I think it's going to be much, much harder. I'm sure if you're in a tech hub, you could probably find a job learning basic CRUD applications. For most people, it's going to take more than that. Another big piece of advice is limit the amount of YouTubers that, that you're actually listening to. You, I mean, there are so many YouTubers out there that are just sprouting and sp bidding bullshit out of their mouths like but um i a lot of people might say that i'm one of them and i you know whatever but I, I really feel like i tell it like it is but if there's one thing that you guys should take away from this video is simply don't call yourself a web developer